Charles? Yes, I'll just respond to Neil. Yeah, I've had some experience with these um, prayer studies because it's quite common that I'll, I'll be involved in reviewing them and advising our trustees, or before that, Sir John Templeton, on whether to fund prayer studies. So I spent some time looking at them and thought that the that null results were actually well justified by the data. Most of the claims of non-null results were, were spuriously argued. Recently, there was this uh, study published at, by a group at Harvard that, that we did fund, and I was very happy that it came out with a null result. Um, now, I think that um, these kind of scientific tests can can persuade people out of what we might call a naive theism, theism being a, a way of going beyond deism, uh, the idea of a personal God. But I think the most, the microphone closer? The most sophisticated people that believe in the idea of a personal God are expect null results in, in prayer studies for very obvious reasons. I mean, C.S. Lewis wrote a very distinguished essay on precisely this. Martin Gardner, another theist, uh, wrote a very distinguished essay in the wise of a philosoph essay in, the, in his book, *The Wise of a Philosophical Scrivener*. So it happens that there are large tracts of human experience that are subjective or intersubjective, and they're not formally scientific. Ram and I had a conversation some years ago when we met. That conversation is completely out of the domain of science. I mean, we we might it might be rather difficult to document when we met, what we said, when we met, where we met. Be rather difficult. I mean, you could, we could do some science on it, like a detective would. But fundamentally, a lot of human interaction and and people that believe in interaction with a divine being, they would say that that this kind of interaction is not objectifiable. Now, you could say that's a dodge, but this would be actually very well developed within theologies, and those theologies, for centuries as well as in modern thought, would critique the idea of objectifiable. Um, interactions such as prayer studies might um, document or, or, or uh, falsify the idea that say you could pray money into your bank account or that if you had cancer you could pray yourself into health. So I would stick with this affirmation that, that although there is a culture around science or philosophies around science or elements of scientism uh, that put pressure on such beliefs, and in my own life I would certainly uh, testify to that, there actually is nothing in science itself that tends to compel this necessity uh, of direct conflict between scientific praxis, scientific habituation, scientific method, and religious beliefs. And one would find within religious literature, ancient and modern, precisely these debates very well developed. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to point out that um, you could have made precisely the same, I'm speaking to you, I forgot your name, Charles from Templeton. Um, right here. Uh, you could have made precisely the same comment, uh, s simply changing a single word uh, to, from God or a personal God to Poseidon. Uh, and without any change in sense, really. And I, and I, I, I have said this before publicly, and, and Richard Dawkins has, has said uh, you know, more times than he cares to count, I'm sure, that, that everyone knows what it's like to be an atheist with respect to Zeus. We all reject Zeus out of hand. We, w we would resist mightily any encroachment into public policy that tried to constrain scientific research out of deference to the Iliad and the Odyssey or any other Zeus worship. And um, you, can, you could say no scientific study has ruled out the existence of Poseidon. Um, and yet this, this analogy, which I'm now drawing between Poseidon and the pers personal Christian God or the Jewish God or the Muslim God, uh, really strikes uh, the theists, Christians, Jews, and Muslims, as a total non sequitur. Um, so a, as an aside, I might say that, that I now get hate mail from people who actually believe in Poseidon, which is you know, <laughs> quite a surprise. I mean, R Richard and I confidently trot out this, this analogy, saying you know, we all know that Poseidon doesn't exist. Uh, Christians or Jews or Muslims, like yourself, think it a totally spurious analogy, and yet, you know, the, the hate mail comes pouring in to my email box from, from neo-pagans who, who, you know, I've been called a racist for, for uh, uh, you know, denying the validity of these religious beliefs. So what you have on your side are sheer numbers of subscribers, uh, 2 billion Christians, 1.3 billion Muslims. Um, it's, uh, that personal God is compatible with, with 
with an endless amount of progress in science, and yet the, the mood you feel the, about uh, Poseidon, the, 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 the reflexive rejection of Poseidon, is the mood that uh, could extend to, to the, the God of Abraham, and, I th and should extend.